What a blessing it is to be with you this day. For the Lord God Almighty, the God of heaven and the earth, has plans for your life and has chosen you for a time such as this. There is nobody like you. There is no nation like this nation. And there is no nation like any nation. We've all been made very peculiar. God is interested in the package he has for your life. And he has so designed your life to fulfill his purpose in the goodwill of his plans for you. God loves you more than you can ever dream of. And he has incredible plans and purposes which no one else can give you, which no one else can fulfill, and which no one else can bring to pass like God himself in your life. I pray this day that you will begin to understand that the walk with God for every man is a necessity. It is not a luxury, not only because of the time in which we are, but because of the value of purpose and the value of opportunity you have on this earth so long as you live. And so long as God's plans for your life have package and design for your life. Uh, I bring you greetings from, from, from Washington and God has a word for you today. I pray that you will stay tuned and listen with your spirit what the Holy Spirit is saying through this vessel. This is Emmanuel Ziga, and we love you so much, and we thank God for the United Kingdom. And let all the nations of the earth know very well that God is a good God. I'm handling the subject today, a ladder set up by God. A ladder set up by God. Let's pray. Father, we ask for your peace, your power, your presence, and your glory. And let your anointing cover this earth. And cover this nation and bring the glory hidden in this nation, hidden in our nations, and hidden in everybody. Let your name be glorified, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm be beginning my message this day from the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 28, and I read from the 12th verse to verse 16. Genesis 28 from verse 12 to verse 16. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, the God of Isaac, the land where thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with you, and I will keep thee in all places where thou goest. And I will bring thee again into the land, for I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken of thee. For I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken concerning you. This was the story of Jacob, a son of Isaac. And Isaac, the only son of Abraham. And God met Abraham in Mesopotamia, in the city of Ur. Among the Chaldeans, Abraham's father was an idol worshiper. Not just an idol worshiper, but he was in the business of selling idols and idol spare parts. So in those days, if, if, if anybody's idol lost the ear, Abraham's father had the spare parts that would mend that ear. And so that kind of lifestyle, uh, generations of idolatry. In other words, generations of serving God in the way not approved of. Therefore, I would say that the act of God visiting Abraham must have been a sovereign move of God, not because Abraham deserved to be visited, 
because he did not know God. And he was in such darkness and so benign of anything called godliness. In other words, he was in the pitch dark life, dark world, and, and, and God appears. So if God can appear to Abraham in such a generation of evil, with such a, a curriculum vitae or a resume of darkness over many years, then there's nobody God cannot touch. You can be in the alleys, you can be in the, in the mountains, you can be in the, in, in the village anywhere, you can be in the crude, cold world full of evil. God knows your address. God can have access to you. You can be in bankruptcy in business. You can be in such a political sham. God has plans for you and he can still visit you. You can be in a nation that has been turned upside down. God knows your address. If God can visit Abraham and turn him around sovereignly, then God can visit this nation and turn her around sovereignly. I believe this day that God is about to visit the United Kingdom and visit this whole British Isles again and visit Europe all over again and visit the nations of the earth all over again sovereignly as he has power to change anything, anyhow, at any time according to his plan. I believe in this God who has no limitations, no restrictions. I believe in this God who has plans and, uh, and, and great objectivity and a God of vision. He's a God of plan, object, objectivity, and vision. I do thank the Lord that he is my God. And I do thank the God we serve that he is the God of the nations. And I do, I do thank God that he is forever the loving God, the caring God, the God of purpose, and the God of plan. I thank God for saving our lives. Abraham was at home one day in the midst of such an idolatrous environment. God steps into his world. And God says to Abraham, Abraham, leave your country, leave your kindred, your tribe, and leave your father's house. And I will make you a great name. And I will make you a great nation. And I will bless them that bless you. And I will, I will, and I will, he says so, bless you till you become a blessing. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. The I wills of God came upon Abraham. Just consider this. That God coming to a man who he knew did not know who he was. And, and Abraham was receiving this I wills of God. This I wills of God. This I wills of God. This is in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. In verse 4, the Bible says, And Abraham obeyed. And left his country, left his tribe, and left his family and followed the word of the Lord. He followed the God whom he did not know. He followed the God whose name he had no idea of. He, he followed the God who he had never seen before, but just believed, took his wife, and journeyed to the direction as the Lord put in his mind. The Bible says that when he, after quite a journey, went down the south way and uh, built an altar and gave a sacrifice to the God who visited him. So Abraham's knowledge of God was the God who appeared to him. Well, today we know him as Jehovah, so we are in a better shape than Abraham. He had no clue what kind of name to call God. So the Bible says, for he made a sacrifice to the God who appeared to him. Well, Abraham's journey was so prophetic. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, God comes to Abraham and says, I am your exceedingly great reward. I am your exceedingly great reward. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. Well, who is this God who visits people who don't know him? Who is this God who visits people who have turned their backs towards him? Who is this God who loves the unlovable, who cares for the uncurable, and who is so interested in those who have no passion for righteousness? This is the God of, of love, the God of kindness, 
and the God who is so passionate to do great things out of small people, great things out of small nations, great victories out of grandiose failures. What a paradox of statement I've made. Sometimes we can be so much of failures that it can be a spectacle to watch. This guy has so failed, and he has so failed, and he's exceptionally a failure that it is quite uh, an observation or a case study of failure. But in spite of what we may call a failure, God has a plan, and God has a dream to, for, for, for a glorious passion. What may be a grandiose failure can become a grandiose success. And in between these two, God does his wondrous acts. I do pray this day that the Lord God of the Bible is about and will visit you. And he will do wondrous acts in your life, in your ministry, in your church, in your county, in your state, in your house, in your home, in your farm, in your workplace. I believe in God and I believe in his miracles. He does wondrous things. He's called Jehovah. So Abraham began to consider the fact that God had spoken these great words to him and said, I will make you a great name and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and you, you will be a blessing and in thee will all the families of the earth be blessed and I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. What a proposal. If God will appear to you and say, hey, let's have a deal. I'll give you my six I wills. And, uh, and just believe me and follow me. Uh, will you please consider this deal? Well, I think it's a good deal. I mean, coming out of the business background, uh, we, 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 we love to cut deals. That's a good deal. God cuts good deal for Jesus Christ to die on the cross for my sins. It's a good deal for God to let someone else pay for my iniquities and let me go free into the blessings. I believe it's a good deal. It's a wonderful deal. God is with you. It doesn't matter what he is. He, you are going through. He has a great plan for you and it's a good deal. I would want to follow a God who gives good deals. And these good deals are not in isolation. They are in connection with eternal plans, eternal purposes, eternal predestinations, eternal predetermination, sorry, and eternal visions. God saw all things years before they happened, centuries before time ever began. God was in charge and he had you in mind, as he had Abraham in mind. Which means that it doesn't matter how many generations Abraham's family and genealogy lived on this earth. God knew that in that particular year, in that particular womb, out of that particular seed, I will choose a man called Abraham. And I will visit him with great favor. And I will bless him tremendously. And I will make him a seed out of which I will bring a new generation, a new breed of human beings. Abraham was so blessed. But Abraham's problem was that with all these incredible I wills, I don't have a child. I don't have a seed who will continue with these processes. Because God told me, I'm sure Abraham said, I will be a great nation. Well, I don't have a child yet. How can, how, how, how can one man be, be a nation? Well, God calls one person a nation because he speaks based on the prophetic plan and the future and he speaks based on the, the potentials. He speaks about his final decisions about that one person. And he calls those things which are not as though they are. In other words, those things which are not naturally are already in the spirit. And he sees those things which are in the spirit and calls the spiritual success a success in the physical. Even though, even though the physical has no, no, no specimen, no evidence of success. So God sees the Great Britain and calls it my beloved nation. God sees the UK and calls it a blessing. God sees Scotland and calls it a blessing. God sees Germany, calls it a blessing. God sees the nations and calls them my beloved nations. 
Whilst we don't think that we deserve God's attention, he thinks that we deserve his attention because his purposes and his plans and his glory are all packaged potentially in us. And he, it's only a matter of time. He will work all things out. He knows what to do. He knows how to do what to do. He knows when to do what to do so that his glory shall be fulfilled. Wonderful God. Abraham with his myopic revelation of life was very concerned. He said, God, how is this going to happen? I have no child, and you, you are calling me a nation? I have no child, and you are telling me out of me shall come the blessing to many families? I have no child, and you, you are calling me a father? I have no child? How is this, this going to be? The Bible says in verse 5 and 6 of Genesis 15, God takes Abraham and brings him out and, say, and says, Abraham, look up, count the stars. Which means God brought Abraham out in the night because no one can count stars in the day. So it must have been a night visitation. God visits a lot at night, works at night, speaks at night in dreams and visions and revelations. He does awesome things. When we think time is up for us to sleep, God is at work. He brings Abraham out and, and Abraham couldn't count the stars. That was when God began to introduce Abraham to the power of vision, that I want you to see the stars. And as you see the stars, you see my plan. As you see the stars, you understand my plan. As you see the, the, at the, at the stars, you know my plan. If you see the stars every day, you understand my will, which means vision has the power to make you see, to make you know, to make you understand, and to make you have a revelation of the ultimate, not the present time, but the ultimate vision, the ultimate plan for your life. So keep vision alive. Keep your stars alive. Keep your stars in your eyes. Keep your stars in your vision. The future is better than your past, and your past shall be negated by your future, and your future shall cancel the woes of your past, and your past are nothing to compare to where you are going. Your best days are yet to come. God speaks to Abraham. Don't worry about now. It's true you have no child today, but your future shall change your story. Your future shall change your testimony. I am the Lord. The Bible says, and Abraham believed, and God considered for him for righteousness. So righteousness is connected to belief. Now, so Abraham began to enjoy this wonderful journey of vision with God, the God whom he had never seen before, the, the God whom he had never really known, the God who had no, no history for him to read about, but he followed God step by step, day after day. Wonderful story. Then Isaac was born, and Isaac gave a child, and this child was Jacob. Jacob received the blessing of Abraham, which was bestowed upon him by Isaac, his father. When Rebekah was pregnant, which was Isaac's father, or, or, or Isaac's wife and Jacob's mother, there were twins in the baby, in the womb, and there was a struggle. The pregnancy was troublesome, but the Bible says that God told the, the, the woman that two nations are in your womb. So here again, God calls a person or a people nations. The first time we, we, we see this was in Genesis chapter 12. God called Abraham, I'll make you a nation. Now he speaks into a pregnant woman's womb or vision or spirit and calls those two babies two nations. So, so, so Jacob was born as a nation in God's mind. Esau was born as a nation in God's mind. This God is a God of vision. The scripture says that as they began to grow, prophecies in their both lives began to separate them. And it did happen that way, that by the, the, the providence of God, there was a separation between Esau and Jacob. Now, Jacob begins his journey. And Jacob clearly is the one who is to carry the patriarchal blessing to Ab from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not Esau, but that was the plan of God. That's what God wanted. That's what happened. 
So Jacob carried the, the very mantle and the mandate. The scripture says that because of how the separation came, there was bitterness between, between Esau and Jacob because he took away his birthright and took away his blessing. Now he, he has the prophetic mandate. He was beginning to run away and beginning to separate himself. He said, vision separates you from the canal plant of, of man. Vision has a way of isolating you. If your vision doesn't isolate you, then it is not born of God. Because God has a way of bringing you out of the common and bringing you to the uncommon. But the process is the process of separation. Separation is a very important aspect of vision development. If you cannot separate yourself from something, you cannot have the uniqueness of your vision. The inability to separate is the probability of you polluting your vision. Vision must be kept clean and pure. Otherwise, it can be adulterated. There are several adulterated visions because of the lack of the ability to be separated. I pray this day that you will enjoy your, your separation from the things which you love to the things which God loves. From the things which men desire in your life to the things which God has for your life. From that which you desire to that which God desires. Vision, vision, vision. It's so important in everybody's life, even in a nation. Every nation must have its sovereign identity in God's sight. And we must keep that sovereign DNA from God as a nation, as a people, as a a tribe, as a family, and, 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 uh, and as a business house, as a political house, whatever it is that God has for you, learn to separate your DNA from the other DNAs because in your DNA lies your peculiarity, in your DNA lies your fruitfulness, in your DNA lies your productivity, your relevance, and your ability to make a difference. It's in the power of the DNA. Now, talking about this DNA, now I, uh, Isaac releases Jacob. He says, go not among the Canaanites, but go among your mother's family and choose for yourself a wife among those. And, and may the Lord bless you and give you the blessing of Abraham. And he took the blessing of Abraham. As he journeyed, because the blessing of Abraham was upon him, the glory of God followed him. You see, there's something about blessing. The definition of a blessing simply is a supernatural empowerment to prosper. A curse is a supernatural empowerment to fail. So here, there was a supernatural empowerment for Jacob to prosper according to the will of God. And blessings have a way of ordering your step. Blessings have a way of creating a spheres of influence for you. Blessings also create atmospheres for you. Blessings also determine your network because the value of your life is in the blessing on your life. And the blessing has a way of creating your DNA and this blessing also has a way of, of causing you to, to, to excel. Not only that, but it connects you to the chosen team or the chosen network that will cause God's will to be done in your life. So separation is very important. Separation out of something to something else. So your, your, your network becomes your net worth. Your network becomes your net worth. And vision has a way of, of aggregating your network. And because that becomes your, your net worth, your value. God was separating Jacob, and on this journey, it wasn't Jacob being separated from his parents to somebody else, but being separated unto God. God became Jacob's network so that he would become the net worth of God. So your network and your, your net value, God visits Jacob in his dream. And in this dream, Jacob sees a ladder and God at the top of the ladder and angels climbing from the earth up to heaven. I call this the setup ladder for destiny. The scripture actually says, and there was a ladder set up, set up, set up. Sounds like a real setup. 
God sets you up and he puts a ladder before you and he shows you the hierarchy of your future. He shows you the stages of your increase to come. God is setting you up today. The UK, God is setting you up today. Mr. Businessman, Mrs. Bus Mrs. Businesswoman, God is setting you up. Families, God is setting you up. For I see a ladder between you and God. And this ladder is going to reveal to you your, 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 your steps into your place of prominence. Heaven is open and there is a ladder. The Bible shows very clearly, and God begins to speak to, to Jacob. He says that, I will give you this land, and your seed will spread to the north, the south, the east, and the west. And I will not let you go until I finish with my plans in your life, until I empty my purpose completely in your life. I pray this day that you lay hold on this ladder because it's a place of purpose. This ladder is an open door for height. And I see a fresh ladder being released upon the UK. I see a fresh ladder being released upon your church. It doesn't matter how successful you have been. There's a new ladder. There's a new dimension. There's a new glory. There's a new face. There's a new level of, of grace. There's a new opportunity. There's a ladder set up for you. God is setting you up for success. He's setting you up to be separated unto the right team. He's, he's setting you up to have a new net worth. He's setting you up to have a fresh new value. There's a new setup. Receive the anointing of a new setup. Receive the release of a new setup. Receive the revelation of a new setup. Receive the vision of a new setup. Receive the, the understanding of a new setup. I see the anointing of a new setup. God is setting you up for a new beginning has come. Thank God for the past success. Praise God for the new beginning. I bless you with the blessings of the Lord. Lay hold upon this word. And God revealed angels climbing back and forth. The angels became part of the network of Jacob. The angels became part of the net worth of Jacob. And God said, I will be with you. So God became a team of Jacob, the team with Jacob. And Jacob, that nation, Jacob, began to grow, began to increase, became Israel. And today, we have seen the generation of Jacob. Today, out of that has come the church, the kingdom of God. I pray the blessing of God is upon your life. Stay tuned with God. Stay in tune with God. Because God in your presence increases your value. And God in your world expands your network. God is your network. God is your net worth. God is your value. God is your vision. He is in you. He is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You are the one we've been waiting for. You are the new visionary. You are the new leader we are waiting for. You are the trailblazer. You are the one with the knowledge of which inventions. Oh, may the Lord bless the UK. I see whatever UK has been in the past is gone. A new beginning has come. Your new setup is coming. Your new value is coming. It's God himself being part of your network. Congratulations. 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 I pray this day that you will lift up your hands wherever you are and just connect with God and just say, Lord, I see this ladder not only for Jacob, but for me too, but for my nation, for my office as, as a leader. And Lord, be my network. Be my net worth. Let the nations be glorified in Jesus' name. There is a ladder. Receive your portion. Amen. Ask the Lord all your